Welcome to TL7 FCS Week 4. Today, we will tackle the fundamentals of food preparation and service and the 7 principles of hazard analysis critical control point. For fundamentals of food preparation and service, we have different food service operation. First, the commercial food service operation. And second, the non-commercial food service operation. For commercial food service operation, the organization that sells foods solely to make profits. Example, the industries such as hotel, restaurants, coffee shops, snacks shops, deli and cocktails bars, and also the convenience stores, catering businesses, and fast food chains. Under the non-commercial food service operations, sometimes called institutional or non-site, this includes educational, governmental, or businesses establishments whose food operations are mainly for service to food employees. For basic rules on food preparation and service, food hygiene constitutes a basic necessity of good manufacturing, agricultural practices, and the development of hazard. Analysis Critical Control Points, or the HACCP. Why food safety is important? First, it protects the reputation of your food service establishment. Second, satisfies our moral obligation to protect the lives and health of our customers. Third, make our employees proud. And fourth, a lapse in food safety may cause contamination that can affect the reputation of your business. Food data indicate that only a small number of factors related to food handling. Preparation of food several hours prior to consumption combined with its storage at temperature which favors growth of pathogenic bacteria or formation of toxins. Insufficient cooking or reheating of food to reduce or eliminate pathogens. Cross-contamination and people with poor personal hygiene handling the food. We have 10 golden rules. First, choose food process for safety. Second, cook food thoroughly and eat cooked food immediately, cook food thoroughly. Fourth, Store cooked food carefully and reheat cooked food thoroughly. Avoid contact between raw foods and cooked foods. Keep all kitchen surfaces meticulously clean. Protect foods from insects, rodents, and other animals and use safe water. For kitchen layout, a good kitchen layout is both aesthetically pleasing and functional. The manner in which the furniture appliances and counters are placed should be pleasing to the eye as well as facilitate the work done in the kitchen. We have factors in planning the layout. First, distance of the sink from the stove. Distance of the stove to the storage for ingredients to the sink. The distance of the storage for ingredients to the sink and ample space for food preparation. Also the size and shape of the room. Enough room to move around freely and comfortably. The work triangle. In work triangle, we have food storage station, the preparation or the cooking station, and the cleanup station. We have types of kitchen layout. First, the single line layout. The single line wall layout all kitchen counters and appliances are placed in a single line against one wall. The galley layout, also known as corridor layout. The galley layout utilizes two rows of working space that are parallel to each other. L-shaped layout. An L-shaped kitchen layout is bounded by two wall or counters. U-shape uses three walls or counters to create U. Maximizing kitchen space and providing an abundance of counter space of which to work. G-shaped layouts. 
The G-shift or peninsula layout adds a short, low wall to the U-shift layout. Island layout. An island is an untouched counter places in the middle of the kitchen. It adds additional workspace for food preparation. Next, the seven principles of hazard analysis critical control point. Each ACCP, a plan involves identifying hazard at a specific points during food handling and identifying how they can be prevented, eliminated, or reduced to a safe level. First, analyze hazard. By identifying the potential hazard associated with food and the measures to control them. Second, identify each critical control point. The point in a food's production from its raw state through processing to a consumption by the consumer. Third, establish preventive measures with critical limits for each control point. An example of using cooked food might include setting the minimum cooking temperature and time required to ensure the elimination of any harmful microbes. Fourth, establish procedure to monitor each critical control point. Such procedures might include determining how and by whom cooking time and temperature should be monitored. Fifth, establish con corrective actions to be taken when monitoring shows that a critical limit has not been met. For example, reprocessing or disposing of food if the minimum cooking temperature is not met. Establish procedures to verify that the system is working properly. For example, testing time and temperatures recording devices to verify that the cooking unit is working properly. And last, number seven, Establish effective record keeping to document that HACCP system. This would include records of hazards and their control methods, the monitoring of each critical control point, and the action taken to correct potential problems. When is HACCP is required? Food service establishments are not required to use HACCP unless they smoke or cure meat for preservation purposes. Use food additives to preserve food. Employ reduced oxygen packaging on site and maintain a tank of live molluscan shellfish for consumption. Custom processed meat and package unpasteurized juice for sale without a warning level. Advantages of HACCP the HACCP system offers useful approaches of controlling food safety. It focuses on identifying and preventing food hazards before they occur rather than reacting to them after they have caused a problem. It is based on sound science and HACCP places responsibility for ensuring food safety in the food service establishment. That's the end of our lesson for week 4. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and share, subscribe, and hit the bell button.